Hi folks. Uh, so what I have here today is a Medeco uh, bi-level cylinder. Uh, this is a relatively recent uh, design of theirs. They uh, released it along with the M3 system. Uh, and this is a lower security version of the M3 system, uh, where it still uses M3 key blanks and keyways, and it does still have that sliding element as an additional block on the uh, sidebar. But um, unlike the M3, which still incorporates uh, the biaxial style uh, rotating pins, uh, the bi-level really just uses uh, basically uh, Medico's own version of a standard pin tumbler uh, design. Uh, so the sidebar is controlled only by that sliding element and nothing else. And uh, so kind of an interesting thing. It feels a little bit different from a lot of things that you might be used to picking. Uh, and to show you just how the whole thing works, I'm going to get this locked up in the vise because uh, it's getting quite uh, uncomfortable to pick in the hand, particularly with mortise cylinders, that threading really cuts in. So we're going to use, uh, because this keyway is really, really open, very wide open, and the warding doesn't even start until about that deep into the keyway, we're going to use uh, the thick Peterson pry bar, and we're going to just try to get it to sit in place uh, on the face of the keyway there. And uh, even though there is fairly complex warding in here, it does leave a very open center, so uh, we're just going to use a standard uh, 25 thousandths uh, Peterson hook, and I'm going to get started there. Now, if you feel really hard resistance, it usually means that you're actually hung up on uh, the keyway wards rather than on a, a pin that's giving you resistance. Okay, so I'm hitting a lot of warding right here. It might be my angle. Let's try to adjust that. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, feel our way along. And hopefully I can find something soon. Okay, feels like pin five, pin four, I think we just set. That's probably pin three, uh, pin one. And now we've got a bit of a false set going, and now we get into a deeper false set. Just, uh, so we should have now set all of the pins, and now uh, the only thing that's resisting us is the sidebar over here. So we can then just turn our pick sideways and push on that slider, and we've got it open. So, uh, fairly simple pick. Very satisfying, too, with the, uh, the feedback it gives you. Now let's uh, see if we can get a look inside this thing. So we'll get the vise out of the way. We don't need that. Uh, let's see, we've got keys. We don't need the picks anymore. Uh, we've got screwdriver, tweezers, hex key, and a pinning mat. There we go. So, uh, because of all the tiny springs and everything in the sidebar mechanism, uh, it's a lot easier with these because Medico pretty routinely uh, puts these nice little uh, grub screws on there. You just get a uh, 5 64th of an inch uh, hex key, and you can pop them right off. just have to be careful because uh, they are what is holding the... Uh, the springs on the pin stack in, and so they are under a certain amount of pressure. If you're not careful, those uh, little grub screws will go flying off. 
Okay, so we have a standard brass uh, key pin. There we go. And let's uh, see if I get a close up here. Um, there we go. So this is what uh, the key pins on this look like. They're just perfectly round. It's got a very nice uh, pointed tip, slightly flat bottom. Um, and for the longer ones, anyway, they have this little groove around the center, which doesn't quite act like a spool. Doesn't quite... Uh, I mean, it doesn't lock up and give you a deep, deep false set like a a spool pin or something similar would, uh, and it sort of acts like a, a serration, but um, what it really does well is that if you overset uh, that pin stack high enough that that uh, lip reaches the shear line, uh, you get a very, very effective way to keep that pin from uh, dropping back down again. So, chamber four has another slightly longer brass uh, driver and a slightly shorter key pin, again with that uh, very wide uh, groove. Everything is blurry. Another spring. Oh, there we go. An even longer driver pin. Very long one. And a very short key pin. And now if you notice, this one does not have the groove, but uh, the overall length of the pin is roughly that of uh, the tip of the other longer pins to the groove. Almost there. Chamber two. Get the spring out of the way. Another brass driver pin. And another long I suspect these are steel. I don't have a magnet handy uh, to check, but uh, they do feel and look like they could be steel. Almost there. Okay. And finally, chamber one. Bring out driver pin, another very short driver pin, and another long key pin. So, not the most complex bidding in the world. I mean, you can take a look at the keys there. So you can see uh, three very long pins in uh, chambers one, two, and five. Another uh, fairly deep, uh, a slightly less deep cut in chamber four, and a very shallow cut in chamber three. And there's the uh, part of the key that actually activates that slider, which we're about to see. Uh, so now that we've got all of that uh, done, we're going to just open up the back, and that just means removing these two screws that hold the cam on. And this is a very, very long screw for that. And then... Got a fairly short screw right there. That's probably because that hole uh, runs very, very close behind the uh, 
show you where the sidebar mechanism is. Put that aside now. And now that there are no pins in it, this will just slide right out. And what you want to do, as you pull this out, first you'll see the sidebar. So you want to hold that in with your finger. And then also up here, you'll see the slider start to emerge. And you want to hold that one in too, because both of those are under spring pressure. So there we go. You can see the uh, channel in the side where the uh, sidebar rests. And that's about it. There's not a whole lot of really special stuff about the body past that point. I don't see any uh, anti-drill inserts or anything. And now we're going to let go of the sidebar. Let that drop out. And so you can see on the sidebar where it has these Two, uh, well, managed to catch at least one of those springs. These things are so tiny. I'm going to be hunting for that for the rest of the day. Uh, so the sidebar here has these two cutouts, and the slider is just that guy out of there. Without losing that spring as well. There we go. Slightly longer spring, but same diameter. Uh, and if you notice, the slider has these two little uh, tabs on it. And what happens is, see if I can get this lined up correctly. Uh, so that's the sidebar, that's the slider. Normally, the spring pushes the slider so it's like that. And then when you insert the key, it pushes it back until these tabs can fit into these little slots. And there's a bit of give there, uh, but it's enough just to make sure that uh, the key does actually have something holding that in place in order to retract, to allow the sidebar to retract, because the rest of the time it's being blocked by these two tabs here. And so that's about it. Um, so, uh, until next time, have fun, happy picking, and if you have any questions, just, you know, put them in the comments below. Uh, have a good one.